Hello everyone and welcome to Stand In TV magazine. My name is Typhoon and I'm your host for this episode. The topics of today are Leovar in 2018, Labratten, Free Strat Festival, Threats for Newspapers, Oculus Rift and Leovarden Nightlife. Everyone in Leovarden has probably heard about this by now. Organizers are busy with preparations, flowers are being planted and the city is overall being changed for Leovarden 2018. We talked to one of the organizers about what exactly is going to happen. So let's see what he has to say. We are here today by Block Eye Sport in Leeuwarden. Today we are on visit by the organization of Leeuwarden 2018. The record of 11,5 million people organizations are momenteel op dun ijs. This is for us a chance to get some clarity and to see what is really happening aan de hand is. Wat kan ik doen? Ik zal ik mezelf even voorstellen. Mijn naam is Radboud Droog. Ik werk bij Culturele Hoofdstad, Friesland 2018. Ik werk hier sinds februari 2015. Nou, ik zal u wat vertellen over mijn werk. Hoe ver is de organisatie voorbereid op het grote jaar 2018? Ik kan zeggen dat we goed zijn voorbereid op het jaar 2018. Het is een enorme organisatie met heel veel evenementen. 40 projecten in het Bitboek die georganiseerd worden. Misschien wel duizend evenementen die in het open programma zullen plaatsvinden. Dus dat zijn de, de evenementen die door de mensen uh, zelf worden georganiseerd. Uh, we, zijn, we liggen goed op schema. Het is, het is een enorme klus, uh, maar het gaat goed. Dat er soms negatieve uitlatingen zijn in de media. Ja, dat hoort erbij, dat geeft ook helemaal niet. Het is zo dat we een transparante organisatie willen zijn. Dat betekent dat je ja, eigenlijk ook constant wel vertelt wat je doet. Ook door middel van dit soort interviews. Ja, en als je uh, uh, je hoofd, hoe zeg je het ook alweer, als je hoofd boven het maaiveld uitsteekt, ja, dan heb je kans dat er af en toe uh, gemaaid wordt. Uh, dat, dat is helemaal niet erg. Het is wel zo dat we merken dat soms de kritiek ook ongefundeerd is. Dat mensen zomaar iets roepen omdat ze een kop uh, van een artikel in de krant hebben gelezen. Zonder daadwerkelijk ook de tekst uh, goed te hebben gelezen. Ja, dat, dat is soms jammer. Maar ja, daar doe je niks aan. Het hoort erbij. Eventueel tekort op de begroting zou betekenen dat er projecten misschien niet doorgaan. We hebben bewust voor gekozen dat we niet het zogenaamde kaasschaafmodel hanteren. Maar dus niet gaan beknibbelen op evenementen. Niet gaan zeggen van nou we hebben bijvoorbeeld een miljoen nodig voor één project. We gaan het voor acht ton doen. We kijken naar het hele programma en dan gaan we zeggen van nou bepaalde projecten zullen gewoon niet door kunnen gaan. Andere wel. Eigenlijk hadden we bij het begin moeten zeggen dat we niet zozeer over een begroting spreken maar een ambitie. Kijk bij. We hebben gezien hoe de organisatie omgaat met de media. Dat er geen problemen zijn in de financiën en dat ze keihard aan het werk zijn om onze onvergetelijke 2018 te geven. Terug naar de studio. Our first guest for today is Bonnie Dijkstra, a street artist in Leeuwarden, who is known for his colorful paintings. Nice to have you here, Bonnie. And um, nice to have your little friend with us. Thank you. And maybe you would like to introduce us to you. Pablo, right? Is that right? Yeah, it's Pablo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, my best friend. Okay. So uh, he's four years old now. Okay. I met him before I go to Ibiza. <laughs> okay. The day before I'm going to fly, I met him. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't go, you know. So I cancel my flight. I pick him up, and two days uh, later, I fly with Pablo to Ibiza for four months. That's cute. That's so, cute. Yeah. Yep, nice. I, I can see that you are very, uh, like, a passionate artist, is that right? You can see it on your skin and yes. um, it's very colorful already. Does that already mm. tell something about your paintings, your, your, your tattoos that you have? Yeah, my tattoos are my life, you know. I was 16 years old when I put my first tattoo on. And everywhere I come, come you know, uh, I put a tattoo on my body. Okay. England, Spain, Italy, everywhere. Okay. So for me, it's yeah, it's it it yeah, it belongs to me. Okay. Yeah. As an artist, you probably are in a connection with Leovard in 2018. Yes. Because you're a local artist here from Leovard. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you will be a part of? Uh, now I did already one bridge. 
Oh, okay. Under the bridge, I make a really, really big painting. Okay. And uh, I want to do another 10. So that's my dream, you know. So okay. it's really nice to see the bridge open okay. and there's a big painting on there, you know. Normally it's really dark. Oh, okay. And now you see a lot of colors. So oh, that's okay. my thing, what I'm going to do. So it's actually under the bridge. Uh, of it's the under the bridge. And if it goes up, yeah. the people who are waiting in front yeah. of it are going to see yeah. your beautiful painting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. And. Um, um, uh, do you also have colleagues who are um, into this? Yes, of course. Everybody want to do something, you know. And but um, it's really difficult, okay. you know, because everybody thinks there's a lot of money, and you go there, and you get some money, and you do your things. But that's not sure. how it works, you know. Okay. You have to do a lot of things for yourself also. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the colleagues gonna do, you know, because okay. everybody wanna do something. But Definitely. yeah, how is the financing then? Are you guys getting proper budgets to do no, this stuff? Or no, is no, it? no, okay. no, no, no. You have to do everything for yourself. Okay. If you wanna do something, you have to go to the companies who wanna help you mm. to give you some money, you know, okay. or you pay it for yourself. Okay. I did a bridge, my first bridge. Okay. I did it myself, you know, okay. and. The culturele hoofdstad, they helped me a little bit, but not enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you're actually also asking the Leopard and the city to finance you guys a little bit more so you can be a part of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have to finance, uh, finance more than now, you know. Okay. Till now we don't hear so much from them. Okay. But yeah, I hope it's going to be like that. Okay. Um, <coughs> and what, what, what is your overall hope for Leopard 2018? What will it bring to the city in your opinion? Yeah, if you believe them, they tell there are going to be thousands and thousands of people here. So I hope it's going to happen like that, you know, and okay. it's, going, it, it's good for the whole city, for everybody, you know. Okay. People are going to bring money here and we need money. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation with you, Bonnie, Thank and especially you. with Pablo, who was not really taking part he's, of it. No, <laughs> he's falling fall asleep, asleep a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, you see, he is relaxed always. Yeah. I can used see. to the things, you know, but the world. He is like kind of you, you know, relaxed yeah. and a yeah. calm person. Yeah, I really enjoyed you. this conversation a lot. Thank you. That you're sharing uh, your passion with us and your uh, experience with the arts and Leo Varda. Um, thank you. Thank um, you. Next, we will have the opportunity to get to know Labran. For this, our team asked people on the streets of Leovard what they think about YouTube stars such as Labrad. So, let's have a look. Hi everyone, today we're in Leovard and we're gonna ask the people on the street if they are familiar with YouTube. Nowadays there are a lot of people who are getting famous via YouTube. But what do the people on the street actually think about those famous YouTubers? Let's find it out. Of wat vindt u eigenlijk van de mensen die zo beroemd zijn geworden om het zo maar even te zeggen? Ja, dat is het tijd van nu. Ja. Ja. Oké. En dan moeten we ook in meegaan. Ja. Ja, natuurlijk. Ken je ook iemand die bekend is geworden via YouTube? Eh meerdere. Hier in de buurt? Ja, mag overal. Uh, even denken. Mag ik u wat vragen? Natuurlijk. Ja, bent u ook bekend met YouTube? Nee. Nee? Nee, okay. echt niet. Ja. Ja, dat is uh, filmpjes voor de, voor de het laptop en zo en de computer. Uh. Okay, ben je verder wel bekend met Enzo Knol of oh, iemand oh, van YouTube? Ja, ja, ja. ja? ja? Uh. Kijk je het bijvoorbeeld dagelijks? Nee, want ik vind het dom. Ik vind het uh, overbodig om je, je dagbesteding met de rest uh, ja. te delen. Ja, precies, en op internet te zetten. Nou, is goed. Kennen jullie labratten? Uh, labratten, ja. Ja? Wat vind je ervan? Als je het beest. Kennen jullie ook iemand die bekend is geworden via YouTube? Ik heb PewDiePie of zo. Nog meer? Moet ik heel veel opnoemen? Huh. Nou, dit is Milan, Game Meneer. Uh, wat hebben we nog meer? Sneaker nieuws. Uh... Bent u ook bekend met YouTube? Nou, af en toe een beetje, een klein beetje. Plaatsen jullie dit ook op Facebook? En wat vind je er nou van als, als zo iemand echt helemaal viral gaat? Pardon, wat? 
100 views. Yeah. We hebben hier iemand met 100 views. Ja, yeah. nieuwe record van de dag. <laughs> Today we have noticed that a lot of people are familiar with YouTube. The guys from Lauratten became famous via YouTube as well. And they are in the studio with us today. Back to the studio. In this studio we have the Dutch YouTube sensations Labratten. The group consists of Dan and Peter, who are also MEM students here at Standard. Welcome to Standard TV Magazine, guys. Hello, Thank you. welcome. It's good to have you here. Um, so we just talked that you guys are studying here, second year students, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, I know. Okay, but you became Labratten, a YouTube sensation in the Netherlands, as I understood. And um, how did you guys came up with this idea? Yeah, well, we started um, last year. Okay. We were bored, and we we can hire free cameras and stuff in the in the in, in school. Okay. So we yeah we we just hired a camera and we uh, went to the city mm -hmm. and just asked people strange questions. Okay. And um, did you guys already had some experiences with cameras with editing? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we didn't know each other okay. because we met at uh, a restaurant nearby school right. and um, <laughs> my girlfriend was saying, yeah, I know a guy and he loves uh, making films and uh, you have to meet him and uh, yeah, we were just talking at the restaurant and we thought, yeah, we, w should we do a radio show or something like that? Okay. And uh, yeah, we were talking about, yeah, we want to make some videos about maybe uh, taboo. Uh, taboo questions. Taboo question, yeah. yeah. Okay. Taboo and topics. yeah, there okay. we started. Um, I can imagine because you guys are full-time students here at Standard, yeah. and it also takes a lot of time to do these things. How much of your free time are you spending for this, actually? Well, I think most of the time we are um, most of the time we are filming. One video takes uh, one day of filming, one day of uh, preparation, and. I think a day of two editing, days of editing, two days of editing, okay. and then you have all the all the aud audience that you have to keep contact with because okay. we are getting a lot of mails from uh, people who, who are who were in those videos okay. that they want out of the video or that they yeah. yeah. Uh, how many subscribers do you have for now? Um, over over forty thousand. Yeah. Wow. And what is your and what is your maximum of views that you have for one video? Three million. Three million. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, guys, I've seen um, you're making a lot of funny videos. That's, yes. that's what I've seen. <coughs> and um, what was the, th th there was this thing that I was really curious about. What was the most crazy thing that you've experienced during your shootings? Um, well, the f I think the funniest video was that we are just going on the street and ask things like, um, yeah, you, you, you can't hear us in that video, so we, we just like, blah, 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 blah. and we, yeah. we <laughs> asked people that okay. kind We weren't of even questions. asking questions, but no. it, was, it was, was in, uh, in my opinion, it was a very funny video. Okay. How was the response but of the people that you interviewed then? Uh, like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> okay. And it, it was kind of awkward, and that's uh, an element we, we like in our, okay. in our show. Okay. It's awkward, and okay. we think that makes it kind okay. of funny. That's, that's true. And, um, what do you want to achieve with the show? What is your dream, actually, to become million subscribers or no, not that much? The, that <laughs> much subscribers, but just entertaining and uh, make the content you want, not looking at anyone okay. else, but make the content you want to, to create. Okay. And it, it, it's another one, uh, someone else' opinion. Maybe uh, it's bullshit or something. But okay. If you like it by yourself, I think um, yeah, making fun of it, of, uh, having fun yep. is the most important thing. Okay, I can understand that. Um, I wish you guys a lot of luck in the future and I hope you can achieve your aim or your dream that you have with the show and will become uh, even more bigger than you are right now. And um, I really um, enjoyed this conversation and thank you for yeah, being here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as next, we are going to take a look at an event that will take place here in Leovarden, the Friesstraat Festival. Some students hope that it will give some variety to the city. For this, we ask pedestrians what they actually think about the Leovarden day life.
Leeuwarden isn't only the capital of Friesland in the Netherlands, it's also the capital of Culture 2018 and the home to more than 30,000 students. Besides that, Leeuwarden is packed with a beautiful landscape and historical buildings. We were wondering how Leeuwarden's daily life looks like and what people think. the way Leowarden is and uh, I especially like the old things about Leowarden and um, yeah the terraces stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well I'm not here that often so I can't really say much about it. And what do you think of the day life of Leowarden when you're here? Like right now? Mm -hmm. yeah, looks good to me. Looks good. <laughs> Every, all the facilities are here. So. Ah, chill. It's chill. Yeah chill. Okay. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of stores and you can uh, I like shoes because you can uh, visit a lot of shoe stores. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very important for me. <laughs> Leeuwarden offers a variety of, of sporting plays where you can play football, basketball or whatever and spend your time like in a park or whatever. So it's very, it's a very open city and um, yeah, I like the people around here, the Dutch tradition and uh, yeah. Basically quite nice. It's lovely, you have some opportunities here. From time to time it's a bit boring since the city is not that big. But people here, the community is, is really lovely and that's what makes the city uh, like a hometown. Overall, Leeuwarden is a beautiful city with a lovely student community. However, in order to contribute to the daily life, a lot of festivals are happening, especially in the summertime. One of the many festivals is the very special Fries Trad Festival, a festival with many different acts and a good taste of music. Next to me are sitting Margaret Harving and Jörke Mulder. Uh, Margaret is the project leader of the Free Strat Festival and Jörke is an artist. Welcome Margaret and Jörke, good to have Thank you, you here. Thank you. And um, first of all Margaret, maybe you can explain us what is the festival about? Uh, the festival is mainly street theater. Okay. So this is a, a, a special uh, discipline in theater arts mm -hmm. and um, so the whole city especially on the Saturday is filled with uh, different kinds of street theater okay. and uh, this is the main thing of the Free Straat Festival okay. and uh, besides we have a very nice music lineup mm -hmm. so that's that's the festival. Okay, um, In short. I already see you brought some posters and brochures with you yes. to make some promotions. Yeah, sure. And, um, <laughs> this is <maybe> the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and when will it take place? On the 29th? 30th? The 29th, 30th and the 31st of, of May. May. So it's okay. the last full weekend of May okay. and it's three days. So we start on Friday night evening okay. and then it's the whole Saturday and the Sunday uh, also. Okay, yeah. maybe we can start promoting this already by passing them by oh to yeah. the uh, guests that, that we have be nice. in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just give it over to yeah. you guys. Maybe you pass it through. Thanks. Do you have enough? I think so. Should yeah. be enough. <laughs> yeah, okay. And um, yeah, let's go to you. Okay. What do you do exactly? You're an artist, so yes. what is your part in this festival? Uh, I think six months ago, I, um, I um, from the organization, I am asked to think about how we could uh, bring the fine art into the festival. Okay. It's now uh, only music and theater and street okay. performance and yep. um, in a little... Uh, we talk about how we could bring the fine arts into the festival and out of that they asked me to uh, make an artwork. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you can see it as a pilot of uh, the fine arts thing okay. in the festival. And okay. I'm making the artwork okay. on uh, this year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. how important is it for an artist that, like you to have these festivals that Margaret is oh. managing? Yeah. For me on this moment very important because I'm starting and it gives me uh, an opportunity to make something, to think about it, to, to get also the money to make something uh, and, uh, 
and to uh, to have a lot of uh, people who can see my artwork as well. And yeah. it's 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 beautiful that they give me this chance to make something uh, for uh, yeah, for for real life or for the how do you say it? Yeah. It's not fake. This is uh, the real thing. Okay. And I like that. Yeah. yeah, and they that's give me the chance. That's good to hear. Yeah. Is it also uh, in align with your aim of this f festival, Margaret? Or yes, we think it's very important to give uh, artists who start uh, a, a possibility to uh, to show their work to the to an audience. Yeah. And we have a lot of. Uh, audience uh, during our festival okay. and uh, it is also something that uh, Erika makes something that's also on the street so that's a very important issue for the okay. street festival because of course, of course. yes because that's our our main thing yeah. and but the uh, people or artists that start are very important so we would like to work with them especially okay for how long are you working now for this festival uh, since when are you leading that the festival is all is uh, I think this is the thirtieth time, mm -hmm. and I'm a manager now for three years. And before I was also all, uh, already involved as uh, with another job. Okay. Yes. Um, what is your favorite memory that you have for this, for this street festival that you remember? Uh, different kinds. Uh, I al always love the faces of people who watch uh, an, an, uh, a performance. Okay. And it can be something that's very funny or sometimes it's, it's, it's sad, but you see that people have an emotion and they experience the, the, the arts. Okay. So that's very nice. All right. Um, thank you for sharing your uh, experiences and your knowledge and your job with us and telling us what you are going to do and what is going to be expected for the viewers. Um, I would like to have a little bit more conversation with you guys, but I think we have to move on to our next <laughs> item. Okay. Um, and our next topic is about video gaming. The world of gaming is constantly changing and evolving. A new and innovative technology is on its way to eventually become a part of our daily life, virtual reality technology. We invited for students to test this technology for us by using the Oculus Rift headset. So let's have a look at the results. Virtual reality is a very important topic in the media industry. It's a technology where man meets machine, where you enter an alternative to existence, but what happens is strictly in the mind. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg saw potential and purchased the virtual reality goggles called Oculus Rift for $2 billion. Because of the exciting development in this technology, we wanted to give students from Stanley University a chance to experience virtual reality through an Oculus Rift. Nice. Uh. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just keep walking. light turning on. Leave me out. <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> Shit. Ah! God! Oh, God. <laughs> 
was for Donna. Well, I think uh, it has poten potential, but uh, um, for now, I think consumers don't want to buy uh, virtual reality. First of all, I was like, ooh, it's going to be crazy, it's going to be very scary. And after that, I became nauseous. So It was such a weird thing to do, because your body isn't moving, but your eyes see everything and you have no idea what's going on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's very scary. <laughs> try it, it's fun. Yeah, you should, you should try it and see it for yourself. Yeah. We have just seen the Oculus Rift used for gaming purposes, but now we are going to talk about ways in which virtual reality is used for psychological treatment. Our next guest is Sander Ackermann from the mental health care center GGZ. Uh, welcome Sander. Um, how does the mental health care use virtual reality to uh, treat um, their patients? Uh, we are using virtual, rea virtual reality in combination with uh, video. Okay. So we have a special 360 degree camera and we are filming, uh, uh, for example, squares uh, in Leeuwarden. There are okay. a lot of people who have uh, anxiety uh, disorder, so they are scared to go out of their house and uh, be on a square, for example. Okay. So what we are doing is uh, filming uh, 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 situations, for mm -hmm. example, on the, the, the square at uh, Aldehove, okay. in uh, five different uh, uh, levels. The okay. first level is there's almost no, nobody there over there okay. and at level five uh, there are a lot of people around you. Okay. So and, uh, uh, patients at the GGZ can uh, practice uh, okay. uh, going out with a virtual reality headset. Okay, um, can you tell us a situation that you've experienced in specific of how the, uh, the, the, the patients are treating these? Yeah, one of the, the, the most uh, difficult situation for a patient with an anxiety, anxiety um, um, fear is uh, uh, being at a situation with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we tested it, uh, the first time we tested it with a patient, uh, we had three videos, one with almost nobody in, uh, in the situation and the third one was with a lot of people around. And uh, it was very strange to see that although the, the quality wasn't that high, it was just at the beginning at our research okay. that, uh, uh, that the patients just panicked out and really had the feeling being on that square. Okay. So, yeah. so what is the major difference then between virtual reality and traditional uh, treatment? What do you think? It, is it better? Is it? No, I, I think there is there's not there's no difference. It's okay. not being re it's not a replacement of the okay. the wall treatment. It's just part of the wall treatment. So, okay. uh, uh, the normal treatment is just going on like always. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 normally, uh, the, the the psychologist says uh, just go out uh, to a square and practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now he's going to practice with the patient uh, with a virtual reality headset. And once the patient finished uh, practicing, he's also able to practice at home because okay. we made an Android and iPhone app. Uh, oh. And this Android and iPhone app can be put in the, the Google Cardboard, it's okay. named. So when the patient is at home, he can just practice like he's been. Uh, so can we expect that this is going to be the future of psychological yeah. treatment? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. so that people are going to be uh, getting their mental health care at home while using... Yeah, I think there is always a need of a psychologist uh, from the GGZ, uh, for example. Yeah. But yes, of course, as a, as a, as a part of the wall treatment, uh, doing it this at home, uh, yeah, I think it will be uh, the future, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you, Sander, for sharing your knowledge mm -hmm. with us. And um, it was a pleasure to have a chit-chat with you about this topic. Um, media students at the Standing University are also educated about the print sector, especially about threats through digitalization. We went to the newspaper publisher Leo Varda Courant and spoke to Arendt van Amman, who is the chief of the regional editorial office. So let's have a look at what he has to say. Vandaag sta ik bij de Leo Varda Courant en ga ik op de redactie vragen stellen over de bedreigingen voor de papieren krant. We staan hier in de papierhal van de Leeuwarder Courant. Wij drukken hier in Leeuwarden, behalve de Leeuwarder Courant, ook het Fries Dagblad en het Dagblad van het Noorden. Als mede vrijwel alle huis- en huisbladen in de drie noordelijke provincies. Arend van der Meulen, chef van de regioredactie van de Leeuwarder Krant. 
Waarom zou men een geprinte krant moeten lezen terwijl we tegenwoordig alles online kunnen vinden? Omdat je meer wilt weten. Online heb je het snelle nieuws kort gepresenteerd. In een geprinte krant worden verbanden gelegd, wordt dieper gegraven en krijg je het uitgebreider voorgeschoteld. Volgens u is de geprinte versie van een krant dus diepgaander, maar toch dalende oplagecijfers. Merkt u daar zelf iets van? Heeft het uw manier van werken beïnvloed? Wij merken dat natuurlijk ook. Alle kranten in Nederland hebben de laatste jaren te kampen met een geleidelijke afname van het aantal abonnees. En het blijkt kennelijk dat een groot deel van het publiek ook voldoende heeft aan het korte, snelle nieuws alleen op internet. Als krant merken wij dat ook en daarop hebben wij ook onze werkwijze enorm aangepast. Want ook wij hebben websites, ook wij venten ons korte, snelle nieuws uit op apps voor tablet, voor telefoon en noem het maar op. En ook in de verslaggeving ga je dat merken, want eh, waar we vroeger bij belangrijke zaken één man op pad stuurden, die alle tijd had om voor de krant van morgen een verhaal te maken, sturen we nu vaak twee mensen, zodat één zich kan richten op het gedrukte product en een ander voor internet aan het werk is. Bijvoorbeeld door een Twitter verslag te maken en ervoor te zorgen dat er heel snel nieuwsberichten komen op de website en alle andere digitale podia van de krant. Bent u daarom ook bang dat de geprinte krant helemaal verdwijnt? Die angst leeft wel bij heel veel krantenmakers. Persoonlijk ben ik daar niet zo bang voor. Al weet niemand waar de oplaagdaling zal stoppen. Denkt u dat de krantenwereld er over ongeveer tien jaar uitziet? Dat weet niemand. We hopen dat we er dan nog zijn. Ik verwacht ook dat we er wel zijn. Maar in wat voor vorm, dat weet je niet. Wat we wel zijn, is als Leeuwarden Krant een leverancier van informatie. En dat doen we op papier, dat doen we digitaal, dat doen we op verschillende platforms. En dat zullen we altijd blijven doen. Maar of papier daarbij de belangrijkste zal zijn of niet, dat zal de toekomst leren. De krant leeft nu van abonnementsgelden en advertenties. Hoe gaat dat online? Ja, online heb je natuurlijk geen abonnementsgelden. Wat je ziet de laatste jaren is dat heel veel kranten hun belangrijke artikelen achter een betaalmuur plaatsen. Zodat je als je het artikel wilt lezen daar een klein geldbedrag voor kunt, gaat betalen. En als heel veel mensen mijn stukje voor twee dubbeltjes per, per klant gaan lezen. Dan kun je zo proberen de omzet te halen die je anders verliest. Wat is dan uw conclusie? Dat de toekomst voor de papierenkrant zorgelijk is, dat die wel zal blijven bestaan, want heel veel abonnees, en we hebben er nog 60.000, kunnen niet zonder een papierenkrant in hun hand. De conclusie is ook dat de informatie via de digitale snelweg meer zal worden, maar dat de mensen daar ook voor zullen moeten gaan betalen, want nieuws is duur. Harun van der Meulen just made clear that there is a variety of threats these days that harm the print industry. Our guest is Marike Schulenburg, who will tell us more about these threats. She's a media and entertainment management lecturer here at Stenen and specialized in the print sector. Uh, welcome, Marike. Great to have you here. Hi. And um, so you are experienced in this field. And um, where did you work before? And what kind of experience did you gain? I started, I think, 15 years ago at the Leo de Courant. Arend, okay. you just interviewed. It was my colleague, so okay, we know nice. each other. Yeah, yeah. cool. And um, and what? So the print industry um, went through a lot of developments uh, through the last decades. Yeah. And um, what was that actually? And how did you experience this? Well, when I started, I also was a student, and I got a job so I started there it was a very good time for the newspaper with a lot of money okay. when I had the idea who I want to go abroad I want to write that and that story fine go Marijke go <laughs> and now nothing is possible anymore they fired okay. journalists they fired the photographers wow. and okay. all the people have to work twice as hard as okay in in these other times yeah um, are you afraid that the print sector will be will disappear in the future because it's going that bad? I don't know. I think you always have people who want to read news, also okay. you, yeah, but maybe yeah. on a website. But it, all that news has to be written and that's done by journalists. So I don't think that it will disappear. Maybe the newspaper will become a kind of niche product with more background information. Yep. But I think you always will have people who want to read okay. and yeah. sit for a newspaper, really take the time for yep. reading. Yeah. 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 Aaron said in the item that free online news 
are a big threat for newspapers. Yeah. And um, what do you think? How could then the newspaper industry stimulate the readers to buy their? Yeah, I think the newspapers they they wait quite long with a, a kind of development, and then they started the apps and everything. Also, the Leo Courant, they came quite late with solutions. Okay. And um, because of that, a lot of people were used already. That news was for free, and you could find it for free in for f in free paper newspapers, but also for free on websites. But it's really a job to write articles and to cover the news. So I think now they started with paywalls, but first they spoiled their readers with giving it for free. And now you have to pay. Yeah. But when readers overcome that problem and really see, yeah, you have to pay for, new for news, that could be the solution then. Yeah. And you see, that, you see it in America already that people are more, more willing to pay for news on websites and apps, etc. So the and then they can earn money again, because okay. that's what they need, of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, thank you, for Marijke, for sharing your knowledge with us. Well done. Um, it gives us a much better insight than we had before, or for me, okay, especially. Okay, I hope so. <laughs> um, let's move to our next item. Students are also known for their passion for partying. Therefore, we took a look at Leovarden's nightlife and interviewed managers of some clubs here in Leovarden. So let's see. Hello, my name is Bart. A popular place for student night out, the Globe, is closed. But, as you all have probably noticed, there are a lot of pubs and clubs in Leeuwarden. Today, we are going through the pub streets to find out more about what these pubs and clubs have to offer for students. The first club that we are going to visit is Club Red, so let's go! I sit here with Marco, the bedrijfsleider of Club Red in Leeuwarden. Uh, nou, waarom uh, is Club Red nou eigenlijk anders dan andere clubs? Hè? Nou goed, uh, Bart, dankjewel. Allereerst uh, super tof dat jullie hier langskomen. Ik denk dat uh, Club Red uh, binnen Leeuwarden uh, een leidinggevende rol speelt. Wij willen graag vooruitstrevend zijn. Uh, ik, niet omdat ik er werk, maar ik vind het echt een hele mooie zaak. Uh, smaak verschilt natuurlijk altijd. In een andere zin zeg maar ook uh, verschillend qua muziek met andere clubs? Nou goed, wat je gewoon ziet is dat um, in mijn ogen um, wij proberen uh, een leidinggevende rol te hebben, uh, vooruitstrevend te zijn. Dus eigenlijk proberen wij steeds iets nieuws. Lukt niet altijd, geef ik ook heel eerlijk toe. Soms dan slaan we ook de plank mis. Uh, want je probeert gewoon uh, constant te vernieuwen te zijn. En wat je dan ziet is dat er eigenlijk uh, binnen de andere kroegen en discotheken of bars van Leeuwarden het eigenlijk best wel snel wordt opgepikt wat hier gebeurt. En um, hebben jullie ook nog speciale soorten acties? Wij proberen wekelijks gewoon, net wat ik zei, met het rad een aanbieding te doen. Wij kijken gewoon naar een product dat uh, nou ja, wat extra stimulans nodig heeft of waarvan wij denken dit zal goed vallen onder de, onder de bezoekers. En die kan men dan uh, in de, wel in de spelvorm, want je kan niet zomaar drank weggeven, dat mag niet vanwege regelgeving. En je mag ook niet adverteren met happy hours of zo. Proberen wij door middel van spelelement zeg maar, toch drankjes uh, in de aanbieding te gooien. Ja. Nou, dan uh, denk ik dat we hiermee uh, afsluiten voor vanavond. En uh, u wordt uh, bedankt. Ciao. En de next club, we're about to visit, is Café Shooters. Vanavond, ik sta hier samen met uh, Lillian, de manager van uh, Café Shooters. En uh, nou ja, Lillian, um, wat, uh, wat maakt Shooters nou net even iets anders dan de andere clubs in uh, Leeuwarden? En uh, ja, wat houdt Shooters eigenlijk een beetje in? Uh, shooters houdt voornamelijk in uh, gekkigheid tot op het randje en het liefst er een klein beetje overheen. Uh, wat het nou zo speciaal maakt, uh, we zijn een hele grote zaak. We hebben twee aparte verdiepingen. Uh, zowel een clubgedeelte op de bovenverdieping als beneden een feestcafé. Dus er is eigenlijk uh, voor iedereen wat wils om het zo te zeggen. Um, zijn jullie ook anders qua muziekstijl? Uh, zeg maar? uh, nou, we hebben dus twee aparte genres. Boven zijn we echt club. Dus daar wordt meer de, ja, de clubmuziek gedraaid, ook een beetje house af tussendoor, techno. Daar beneden zijn we echt feestcafé, dat is inhaken, meezingen, bier drinken, er worden polonaises gelopen. En beneden varieert het van top 40 tot de Nederlandse Smart Lab, om het zo te zeggen. Oké, okay. zeg maar speciale aanbiedingen voor studenten of speciale avonden dat een biertje bijvoorbeeld iets goedkoper is of zo. Ja, we hebben op maandag International Student Night. Dat houdt in dat er van half 1 tot half 4 s'avonds twee halen één betalen is. Op dinsdag hebben we meters bier voor 12,50 in plaats van 24 euro. En dan hebben we alle shots voor 1,50. Dus dat geldt voor de minder sterke shotjes als tot de tequila's en boeka tot, tot de whiskies. Um, op woensdag hebben we onze pitcheractie. Uh, dat zijn pitchers voor 15 euro. 
Op donderdag zijn de meters bier weer aan de beurt. Op vrijdag hebben wij flesavond. Dat is een fles Berenburg, Carantetre, Jägermeister of vodka voor maar 40 euro. Oké, okay. nou hartstikke bedankt. Nou, tot zo. En last, but definitely not least, Café Scooters. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. So we saw the clubs and what is happening there. So get all your friends and go party. In the studio we have now Jan Pierre Brands. He is the manager of Pop Podium and will tell us more about the future events in general nightlife of Leovarde. Welcome to our studio, Jan. Thank and you. Um, what is your opinion about Leovarde's nightlife? I'm really curious about that. Uh, I think it's uh, very good. I okay. think for a city uh, uh, with this. Um, uh, the big it is, I think there are a lot of different uh, things to do. I also think that there are uh, some stuff uh, missing uh, and um, uh, we're building right now a new pop venue right across the theater uh, Harmony okay. uh, in the same street where Shooters and Club Red and uh, uh, Scooters uh, is in yep. the uh, Ruitersquartier. And um, there's going to be two uh, 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 venues, one big room, one smaller room okay. where we will organize uh, concerts and uh, dance nights. Okay, and um, what kind of acts are we going? Can we expect from the public? Um, I think um, s some of the acts that were uh, in the Ro in Romain uh, uh, pop yep. venue, yep. Uh, because that's uh, they're gonna close. Uh, I think this weekend, mm -hmm. next weekend. Okay, uh, and. Um, uh, uh, so a lot of uh, stuff that they are uh, doing, mm -hmm. but also some new stuff like uh, uh, national uh, acts, uh, uh, international acts, uh, and a, a big diversi diversion of um, uh, dance nights like techno or deep house. Or okay. And um, um, I think you're really kind of experienced in Leeuwarden's nightlife. So you're here since a long time. For yeah. how long are you yeah. here? <laughs> no, I don't live in Leeuwarden, but I studied okay. here, uh, I think, um, End of the 80s, early 90s. Oh, okay. So I'm. Uh, so how how did it develop the music scene here in Leeuwarden? What did you experience? Uh, I think uh, Leeuwarden has developed a, a very good uh, live uh, uh, scene. Okay. I also think that uh, in Leeuwarden there are a lot of new uh, festivals, which is very good. Not only the Straat Festival, but also Welcome to the Village. Yep. A lot of new festivals at uh, Groene Ster, like the Dance Festival, uh, Promised Lands, and uh, okay. the Sci-Fi Festival. Mm -hmm. So I think it's ve it's very diverse and also very ambitious and I also think there is a lot of talent in the city not only uh, uh, artistic talents mm -hmm. like uh, pop artists or yeah. bands or DJs or producers but also uh, very good uh, people who organize uh, stuff okay uh, and I think that's very promising also for uh, cultural capital 2018 that there are mm -hmm. a lot of people who cannot not only be on stage but also organize uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's also part of the uh, the quality of media and entertainment management. A lot of your students are taking places now in the city. That's true. Yeah. And I think that's 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 very good. And yeah. I think that's the big development of uh, Leeuwarden okay. in the last 10 years. So we can see that Stanen is taking part of the development of Leeuwarden. Thanks right. Jan for uh, sharing, uh, sharing your knowledge with us and telling us something about the Pop Podium and what can we can expect from it and for being our guest today. Um, this item brought us to the end of another episode of Stand and TV magazine. We covered topics from YouTube stars to virtual reality over to the Freestrad Festival and Leo Varden 2018 as well as its nightlife. We hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in two weeks for the next episode of Stand in TV Magazine. So goodbye. Woo!